All right, this video is to talk about one of the coolest things in home assembly and just assembly and repair in general that you can do to repair circuit boards. Yes, that's right, I'm gonna be talking about UV curable solder mask. Oh, this stuff's cool. And it came up in a conversation with a good friend of mine recently, so hopefully this video will help him out as well. I wanna show what this is, how it works, and uh, how, to, how to do it. Um, so what I've got here is a, this is actually a 74HC165, this is a shift register chip, and the clock signal goes to pin 2 here. I needed to disconnect from the, from the motherboard, and you can see I've actually lifted it off the board here uh, using these, this very nasty fine piece of uh, tweezer bit here. Um, and I need, to in, I need to inject an inverted clock into this instead of the original clock. Uh, that came from that, uh, there's a trace that actually goes under the chip, which is why I've lifted the pin instead. Um, you can also, you know, desolder the chip. However, since I'm, this is a very fine pitch. This is a 0.5 millimeter pitch. This is a TSSOP chip, also known as a TSOP. And because it's such a fine pitch and I'm going to be injecting a, a wire on top, I could just solder that now and it might be good enough. But what I'd really like to do is actually insulate or isolate the pad underneath it so that if this gets bumped or pressed down, it does not short the two clocks together. That would be very bad. And so the cool way to do this is with UV curable solder mask. What is UV curable solder mask? What is solder mask? Solder mask is the stuff that covers the copper on a circuit board. Um, and there's uh, many there's many layers to a circuit board. There's the... Um, there's the PC uh, substrate, usually, uh, um, ah, I'm forgetting the material right now, but uh, anyway, that's, and then that has a layer of copper, then that has a solder mask, then there's a, um, a cover to that solder mask as well. Anyway, there's, there's all these layers to a circuit board, and all you need to know is that this green stuff right here, and it can be any color, is insulating the copper uh, from uh, being exposed. Um, and so in this case, though, we've already tinned this pad. It's now got tin on it, not just copper. But in any case, we should be able to apply some UV curable solder mask. Now, I haven't done this in a while. We'll see if this stuff's even going to come out of, the, out of the dispenser here. It's been so long. But uh, if it doesn't, I will work on it to make sure that it does. Oh, there it goes. And yeah, it kind of comes out a lot <laughs> sometimes. I only need a tiny, tiny bit, so I'm going to use my, I might actually use a uh, toothpick here to get the appropriate amount onto the pad. It's a very fine pad. If you're doing this, you probably won't be doing anything near this small. It might not even be great for this particular application, but we're going to find out. What's cool is that even if you screw this up, you can still scrape it off. It's not like ultra, ultra permanent. But I just want a little insulator under there. And you'll see I've got kind of a glob of it. Definitely more than I need. But again, this is... The pitch between these pins is less than a millimeter. It's half a millimeter. This is really small stuff that you aren't likely to be working with. If you're watching this video, you can do this with dip packages, SOIC packages. Much larger stuff to your heart's content. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can absorb a little bit of this with... my uh, q-tip here but you'll see that's pretty nice actually it's, you know it's not the prettiest thing in the world under the microscope but it should do the job and amazingly my uv curable solder mask did not go bad in the like year plus that i haven't used it so that's pretty cool and now the fun part so you get some uv uv curable solder mask i don't know it's probably 10 bucks or less and then for less than 10 bucks for about five or six bucks you can get yourself a mini UV curing lamp. Now, mine just fell over when I knocked over some stuff a second ago. Oh, here it is. But you get yourself a... Let's see if I can uh, move on down to the bench here. You get... This one comes in pink because what it, this is for, it's, it's, uh, it emits UV light from these LEDs, and it's meant for people curing their nails. <laughs> Their nail polish it's kind of funny 
So what's cool though is it comes with this little these little standing feet. These are these are very affordable, like I said. And you just plug in a little micro USB, get it over your circuit board, and in a few minutes, you'll have yourself a nice durable solder mask. So I'll go ahead and put this on here. I may or may not edit this video into two parts depending on how long this takes to cure. Should be about five minutes from what I remember. Uh, make sure you do not look at the light when it's doing its thing because it's pretty bad for your eyes. And uh, yeah, let's give it, let's give it some time. Maybe while it's doing that, what can I show if there's anything interesting? But I could show as far as schematics or diagrams. Oh, here's a fun thing I can show. I've been working with uh, a logic analyzer. This is uh, using the Analog Discovery from Analog Designs. Uh, pretty cool software, actually. And it will export uh, PNG files so that you can analyze your various waveforms. This is with the Digilent software, uh, or actually it's called the Waveforms software, but it's also Digilent is the parent thing. I don't know, it's Digilent, it's Analog's the parent company, but then it's, they're paired with Digilent and Waveforms. I don't know, too many company names, alphabet soup, but it's cool stuff. And what you can do here is you can, you make your signal um, these DIOs are the, the digital IOs that are available on the bus that plugs into the actual hardware. And so you, you, you select one, you can name it whatever you want, which is super useful. As you see here, I've named these various uh, spy interface uh, bus names. This is an old clock, this is the new clock. And then you can set your trigger, which is really cool. There's actually two triggers that are on the bus that you can wire in to whatever source you want so it will trigger on those or you can set it to normal and when you set it to auto it'll 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 uh if you set it to audio auto it'll stop on the trigger but then restart after a few seconds which i find kind of annoying so i just put it on normal and then what you do is you go to this t mark this t header here and you can select um for example this one uh you can have it on the high on the on the rising edge the falling edge or any edge uh, so any transition, and that will trigger it. That'll tell it to stop, stop scrolling, essentially, stop running the program, not the program, but stop running, uh, stop reading the uh, the signals, and uh, and then you can export that as an image. You can do that with multiple digital signals at once, and you can capture them, and see their relationship between each other, to see what's going on in your signals, in your signal, in your uh, whatever you're working on. Extremely useful for debugging. And uh, yeah, just a fun thing I've been working on. Figured I'd show that. Um, the rate here too, it'll show you the frequency that you're looking at. Um, and this will, wow, this actually will show 20 megahertz. It will actually only read accurately up to, I think five megahertz. So I'm not sure why it even shows that tall or that high of a, of a rating. But um, the one thing to do that you do want to know though about logic analyzers is they will not show you a really accurate representation of the waveform. I mean, this is generally what the waveform is doing and it's, you know, it is triggering the high and lows of this TTL signal, but this five volt signal, but uh, in real life, of course, there's a bunch of noise and jitter and all sorts of phenomenon that can affect things. So you don't want to rely on your logic analyzer too much. It's more just sort of a rough idea of the highs and lows and how they're interacting with one another and generally speaking what what a cpu might be seeing on the waveform one thing that i think is kind of interesting is kind of uh examining what the hardware will interpret as a proper waveform what the hardware would actually think yeah i can see this this is cool i'll make this go high versus what your application might be interpreting. Could be very different, actually. It's not all things trigger appropriately on a rising or falling edge that's noisy or dirty or has, you know, various issues. So that's kind of cool. Uh, what else can I talk about? I also was working on a 74HC221 circuit for the Sync Clean Pro that I've been designing. 
Um, I know folks have been waiting on that for some time. And uh, part of another project I'm working on, um, I was able to bring that circuit back into the fold and do some work on it, which was pretty fun and interesting. And I will be able to incorporate that sooner rather than later, hopefully, to a upgraded Sync Clean Pro add-on using the so-called Martin Jones uh, Sync Generator circuit. Martin Jones is just the guy who's credited with it because he knew about the 74HC221, which is a very old chip, but very useful. Uh, 74HCT221 to be exact. Um, and uh, it's going to be cool for recreating some sync pulses and doing some synchronization timing stuff to repair um, for arcade motherboards more uh, and arcade cabinets, monitors and stuff. So that'll be cool too. Anyway, that's enough blabbling. Let's see how our uh, UV curable thing is doing. Switch over back to my microscope, if it'll let me. Did I turn my microscope off? I did. And sometimes the UV curable stuff takes a while, but let's go do a little check on it. Because why not? Of course, we just get the pink shell of our, of our thing right now, but let's take a look. Well, we've got a little bit of a top. Yeah, look at that. It's almost fully cured. So um, obviously I'll put a little bit of solder on this and that'll melt a little bit of the, but you can see that I can actually, <laughs> I can actually scrape stuff on it. Pretty cool though, huh? It's a way to insulate your circuit boards. And um, I was recommending this to a friend because he wanted to get rid of the uh, copyright type info on a motherboard that he wanted to uh, produce and um, sometimes you'll have motherboards with weird stuff printed on them and you want to get rid of it and scraping it off could take a lot of time. So doing some uh, UV, uh, UV curable solder mask could be the way to go for you. Here's a image of, uh, here's a little look at what I was using for this. This is the OOH, what does this say? E-C-H-A-N-I-C. Type is LY-UVH900. Mechanic UV Curing Solder Mask Ink Green. But uh, yeah, you can find this or the equivalent to it all over the internet these days. And get yourself one of these uh, Sun Mini LED Nail Lamp, is what this is called. This is about five bucks. You can find variations of this anywhere. This is a six watt, six LED. And it says no dead zone for curing. Have fun with your hacking. Thanks for hanging out with me and learning about UV curable solder mask. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.